In this video, I will taste our Yan Hong Superior, an unusual black tea in both appearance and taste, and also tell you a little bit about the history of Yan Hong, the Yunnan black tea. Let's get started. Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanoshan, where we share the pleasure of discovering and drinking genuine farm tea. And if you're new here to our channel and you're looking to expand your tea knowledge and brewing skill, then make sure to click on the subscribe button. Today we are speaking about our Dian Hong Superior. Here it is. This tea uh, is uh, called Dian Hong and Dian Hong means uh, uh, Yunnan uh, Red. Dian is uh, a shortening that was specially used in previous uh, uh, days for uh, Yunnan. So Dian Hong means Yunnan Red, meaning Yunnan Red Tea. It is uh, a tea that was harvested in the spring 2017 in uh, um, Fengqing in Linzang, Yunnan. And uh, uh, it is uh, made of buds only. So as you see, there are some commonalities with uh, a white tea that uh, I have been recently uh, posted about, the Yue Guanbai. Yue Guanbai, uh, at least uh, the one that we have on stock now, is also made of only buds and is a tea that comes from the same very region, from uh, uh, Fengqing in uh, Linzang. And, um, there are in fact some commonalities between the two teas and it's not by chance that I've selected the two of them one after the other to present to you. Okay, so say that, uh, let's have a look at the leaves. Uh, first I have here uh, in the lotus about uh, um, three grams of leaves that I will use with this guy one that is about uh, 85 to 90 uh, milliliter underneath the lid. Uh, as I told you before, 3 grams is pretty much uh, the standard I use uh, when I want to find out the taste of a specific tea, uh, except for uh, green tea, maybe and poor. If uh, now we look at the leaves here, we have uh, um, the, a very, uh, very straight uh, uh, buds, uh, almost perfectly straight actually, and uh, of a very bright uh, copper uh, color. This is very, very typical of Tian Hong because uh, those white buds that you have seen in uh, Yue Guanbai becomes gold when the leaves are oxidized. And on top of that, you see that there are also some uh, um, very dark, I would say almost black uh, stems attached to the buds. Let's see how the leaves smell, the dry leaves. Mm. So if you breathe on the leaves, you get much more aroma out of it. And the first thing that I think about is um, spicy. It has a spicy uh, smell. Freshly spicy. You get also a little bit of those uh, hairs that are on the bud, so it has uh, a kind of um, uh, fiery, dusty uh, smell. And maybe a little bit of um, earthiness to it. Very, very slightly, very gentle. But definitely those fresh spices are very dominant there. And uh, um, the thing I associate them with is a kind of Indian spicy uh, spices. It reminds me a little bit of uh, the fresh bite uh, of ginger or maybe of mint if you want. Um, because, yeah, it is spicy and it's fresh at the same time. And if I think at a spicy, a spicy that is also fresh, I think about mint, about uh, ginger. But it's strongest. It has, it has a deeper and stronger taste. It's not so light like mint. It has maybe the strength of uh, um, cumin if I have to go uh, to India. And maybe some, some dry basil. Yeah, I think, I think that's rendered pretty much the idea. So think about some very fresh, uh, ginger, mix it together so to um, with some dry basil leaves 
and uh, uh, the additional strength of cumin. So if you mix uh, those three spices together, um, I pretty, I pretty, yeah, it pretty gets close to this, to this melcia. Very, very interesting actually. And um, so what we're going to do now, I put them in the guy one here. And uh, I'm going to give uh, uh, a quick rinse to the leaves to see which other uh, fragrances come out of the leaves. The water is uh, at about uh, 90 degrees uh, centigrade. It follows very quickly. Oh, it's already smelling. Mm. Here, yeah, the spicy, the spicy notes are even more uh, clear in the bowl. You don't have that um, uh, dusty, furry um, fragrance that uh, I was uh, smelling before when I was smelling the leaves. And um, in the bowl, it even reminds me a little bit of curry. Oh, yeah, it's strong. Dustiness is coming out again. And um, uh, the leaves smell a little bit uh, flatter, deeper. And um, maybe they remind me of uh, wet grains a little bit. Wet, just because they are wet and yeah, grains, cereal. Hmm. Okay, let's steep the tea. I will uh, steep it uh, starting from uh, 60 seconds. And let's see, and maybe while it is steeping, I will tell you a little bit about the history of uh, uh, the black tea from Yunnan. That some people think it is. Uh, a very old history, like the one of Puer, for example, or even of white tea, but actually it's a very recent one. In fact, uh, um, you know, all the wars are bad, but actually it is because of a war that uh, uh, we have Dian Hong today, and if it wasn't because of the war, we wouldn't have got uh, this, uh, this tea. And in fact, uh, it was in between uh, the uh, two uh, world wars, that uh, is when uh, Japan invaded uh, uh, the eastern coast of China. And they occupied the, the, the land on the eastern coast. And when they did so, China had no more access to those important uh, uh, harbors that uh, granted actually the export and trade with uh, the Western world. Uh, harbors, la uh, harbors like uh, Xiamen or Guangzhou were no more available. So, um, the Chinese needed their uh, export revenue also to support the cost of the war. And so, um, what they did, they knew that far uh, in the west, in the southwest, in Yunnan, there were large extensions of lands that were very suitable for uh, um, tea production. In fact, poor was already being produced there and also white tea. And so, they thought, why? Don't we start there also black tea production? In fact, black tea on the East Coast was um, an export tea. It was a cheap substitute for dark oxidized and darkly roasted uh, oolong, merely for the export. So what they did, uh, they started uh, um, basically at the beginning of the Second World War, the uh, Dian Hong production in Yunnan. For doing that, they used actually the local tea plants, so uh, what they call daie, large leaf, and what today botanists call the Assamica variety of the Camellia sinensis. So it is a fairly recent uh, tea, less than 100 years of history. So I don't know if you can see it from the camera, probably not, but uh, the um, uh, the, the color is uh, yellow reddish uh, with uh, a very clear greenish ring along the rim. 
and this greenish ring is an indication that uh, this black tea is not very heavily oxidized and in fact this is also why the reason why we have selected that this uh, Dian Hong Superior I will get uh, to that reason in a second but let's see how it tastes The, dusty, that's the first thing that came up in my mind and those spicy notes are not there when you first uh, um, drink the tea but they come after back so they are more present in the aftertaste and um, it's not very um, malty, so like the typical uh, black tea from the east that have this malt taste uh, to them. These are uh, very faintly. So let's do another steep. I will do it even longer just to see if uh, we get uh, also some bitterness out of it or not. It's mild and round, so it is it's not the typical black tea, very intense and strong. Um, yeah, definitely. It is, um, it is a, a, a light black tea um, that is still though those characteristics typical of Yunnan. So don't expect uh, a very pure taste. So light and pureness, lightness and pureness is two different things. This tea is fairly light, but it has that uh, uh, diversity and complexity and uh, roughness uh, that is so typical of Yunnan. I like to steep it a bit longer than other teas, maybe to compensate a little bit uh, for uh, uh, the, um, the lack of strength and it will never ever turn into a very heavily and malty uh, black tea. The color is very much the same. If you, if you look it against the light, you really see um, how the rim becomes larger and greener. It's, um, it's not bitter and not astringent actually. So you can definitely steep it for uh, for a longer time, and um, what um, what you get out of this tea is basically if you want a compromise between uh, the pure malty teas from Eastern China, teas like uh, um, uh, the the. Um, Zhenghe Gongfu, Tanyang Gongfu, Bailing Gongfu, um, Chilmen Honcha, that all have this maltiness and sweetness uh, to them and strength. This one uh, is less pure. It is, uh, say, that is more, uh, uh, is, is rougher, is wilder, but uh, is not so intense as the typical Dian Hong. So the fact that it was oxidized gently put it kind of in between the two sides, uh, the black tea from the east and the black tea from Yunnan. So you, did, you get that Yunnan taste without being overwhelm, overwhelmingly wild and rough. Uh, I hope I can render a little bit that idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's, a, it's a black tea that goes well along the uh, every season. Like now it's very cold in Denver. I, I had to put this weather on because the temperature dropped outside so quickly that I wasn't even able to warm up this room. But with the tea, I'm getting the warm back. Hmm. All right, so you have now a little bit of a feeling, a better feeling, I hope, how uh, the Anhong Superior from um, Yunnan taste. 
You have the other videos uh, that we shoot about uh, Yue Guanbai that have a lot of commonalities. Go and have a look. There should be a link right now on the video to that uh, uh, on this video to that video. And I hope you have enjoyed uh, watching. If it is the case, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Very very important for us. And go ahead and subscribe our channel if you haven't done it yet. And much more videos like these will come your way very soon. Enjoy your tea moments and I will see you very soon on the next video. Bye bye.